Hello and welcome to the Start Creating Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping you grow on social media, from YouTube to Instagram and so much more. I am your host, Alan Spicer, your YouTube certified expert. I have around about 12 years worth of experience in this industry, from web development to social media marketing and video editing in itself. This podcast will be about news, tips, tricks, and your submitted questions should you need any help within the social media space. So follow, subscribe, enjoy the ride, go out there, start creating. So here we are for episode three. Thank you for everyone that's been listening so far. It's been, I've been getting some really great feedback. It's really, really nice. And I know I said this last time. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining the Start Creating Podcast family. We are now available in multiple places. You can go to startcreatingpodcast.com. We're now available on things like Stitcher and Spotify and Apple and Google Play, everything. Now, it's been it's been great getting this up and running, right? It's been taking my mind off um, my absolute fear of the doctor's I mean, some of you that might have been watching my Instagram stories, I've, I'm terrible, I'm terrible, I'm a typical bloke. At the end of the day, I moved up to, to Yorkshire, around about eight, nine years ago. I got a doctor two years later because my ear wasn't working and my girlfriend at the time was like, well, you know, if, if you can't really hear out of that or if your chest isn't working, you should really go to a doctor. And I just don't, I just don't like them. Now... Once once that was sorted, I, I haven't been to the doctors for like eight years, well, no, six years since, right? So I promised, once I moved in with my, my, my current girlfriend, right, that I'm old enough now, right, I'm turning 35 this, this year, I should really get that health check that I, pro- I promised myself for years. I'm terrified that I might have all of the ailments under the sun, Right, because that's my brain worrying, even though in reality I probably don't. So I promised myself in November that come January for a New Year's resolution that I'd I'd, I'd finally get a doctor. I'd move my doctor to her doctor's, right? And then at that point I'll give myself a full MOT, a health check. And then that way they can tell me that I'm overweight and that I need to lose weight and that, you know, uh, I sleep too too much or not enough, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? That was the plan and that was the promise. Now, come January, I needed to submit ID. My ID was out of date. Why do I need ID? I don't drive. Um, I work from home. I met clients in local coffee shops or over the phone or on Skype. I didn't need ID, right? Um, for, for forever and a day before I met my, my partner, who I've now been with for over a year, um, I'd been single for three, three four years. So, you know, it, ID wasn't a problem. I'm, I've never been a nightclubbing person, you know. I've not, I've not been ID'd in a shop for years to, to buy alcohol, because you don't, because in the UK it's 18, right? So, right, so... Filled in the, the, the doctor's paperwork, handed it in. They're like, nope, there's no address on this. There's, you don't have correct ID. So I'm, I already don't like doctors, right? I had to get the, had to build up my, um, I don't know, find a set of balls and, and, and build up my courage to go. Fill in the paperwork, fine. No, no ID. Finally, as you may have noticed on Instagram stories, finally sorted out the ID. It's fine. Went to the doctor's. Right, for the first health check, in which I was really, really worried about it anyway, right? But no, no, they couldn't do anything then. So now, right, here's the update. Sorry for rambling, right? I now have blood tests, right, on Friday. So I'm recording this a day or so beforehand, you know, the the, the magic that is an audio podcast. You get to, to know my, my scale beforehand, right? And I'm already scared. Why? I don't know. Once again, my brain's just doing the whole ah, ah, thing. It's I'm worried that they'll they'll give they'll take my bloods and two weeks later they're like, "Yep, yeah, you you you've got everything. You, the only reason you're alive is because all of the things in your body are balancing your death out, Mister Burns." If you get that reference, I love you, right? So 
I just wanted to share that with you. That's kind of kind of the part of this podcast where I want to share personal sides of my life. I, I want to know, are you scared of doctors? Is there certain things that you are you don't like? Are you afraid of needles? Are you afraid of appointments? Do you not like dentists? Are you, are you afraid of opticians? Or are you fine with those but you really can't go near teachers? Or you don't like asking for things in public or singing? Or Is there an irrational fear in your life? That you'd like to share with me to make me feel better, right? Tweet at me at Alan Spicer, the letter Y, the letter T, right? Because I was trying to spell out my uh, Twitter account handle to somebody else the other day, and when I said Alan Spicer YT, they thought I said Alan Spicer YT. So yes, um, <laughs> so yeah, tweet tweet your your fears at me. Or use the hashtag, um, hashtag start creating podcast. And we, we can chat about our irrational fears together. And then, you know, maybe it makes me feel not so bad. And I'll keep you updated as we go forward. Now, today I'm going to deep dive into the news very shortly. But also we're touching upon how I grew my YouTube channel to 6,000 subscribers in just two years. And how it is snowballing. And I give you all of my secret tips and tricks. This week in the news, I'm going to discuss the fact that IGTV is opening itself up to landscape video. Now, some of you may have already seen on Instagram TV that it's it's a very profile-based platform. It was effectively selfie videos for Instagram stories to be made into IGTV videos, and I, for a very long time, ranted about that videos have to be wider than they are tall. That's that's how we natively watch them. That's the reason why our TVs are shaped that way. People are used to that format. So when IGTV brought out the idea that its only unique feature was that they were hell-bent on just being portrait over landscape, I, I met it with a bit of cynicism. Now, people are becoming more and more used to portrait over time. It still looks ugly on YouTube, and YouTube have now included native support that it will change the size of your video on YouTube if it's a, a non-native 16.9 format or a television landscape format for people that aren't aware of ratios. Now, at the end of the day, them moving to a more landscape-friendly actually just means that they're going to accept that people do what they already do. They take their YouTube video, they upload it, they flash the words, rotate your phone just beforehand, and then people rotate it to the side, and then they watch it as if it's a normal video. Now, when you upload it and rotate it, I believe it will natively accept that and rotate accordingly. And this is just a year after IGTV was born. Now, IGTV, for people that aren't in the know, is the video section of Instagram itself. If you go to some channels, including my own, you go to Alan Spicer YT on Instagram, you'll see that I've got an IGTV tab. In there, I discuss the odd couple of topics. One of my most recent videos was about mental health when I was wandering around the canal recording some YouTube videos. Now, there hasn't been a massive land grab for IGTV. When it first came out, a lot of creators migrated to it. But it's become hard to create content because it's a very awkward shape. And in my case, I jump around the screen of my YouTube videos a lot, so I can't repurpose it like a, a an IG teaser. So, they made it a little easier for you now. When I uploaded an Instagram TV video, an IG TV video, they now allow you to repurpose it immediately into a teaser on your Instagram feed. So, I talk... It shares a one-minute clip to the IGTV, uh, the, the Instagram feed. You click on the Instagram and it plays the rest of the IGTV video, saying, would you like to play the rest? I think that's better. I mean, it integrates the, it integrates the platform a bit more. But one of the biggest things that IGTV is still missing is monetization. Now, they're very tight-lipped on this. I think... Rightly so. People don't want necessarily to have adverts in a platform that's still not fledgling. Imagine that, you know, you you finally bother to give IGTV your time and your effort, and then you're interrupted by yet another advert. 
I'll be honest, it's one of the reasons why I didn't touch Spotify for so long. Still don't, I'll be honest. The whole idea that you'd listen to three to five songs and then it would force adverts on you. Um, Non-skippable ones after time. And that put me off the service. It was brand new. I might as well just download my own music and put it on my, my phone and play it that way. So if you're flicking through IGTV videos, I mean, TikTok doesn't bombard you with adverts. Correct me if I'm wrong. Once again, I'm too old and I'm not on TikTok myself. Um, I know that's against what I preach. I suggest that you dabble on platforms, but TikTok drives me mental. It's like ADHD for teenagers, but maybe I'm just getting old. So, does this change with IGTV being more landscape friendly affect how you view IGTV? Do you have an IGTV account or is this something that you'll now start to double in and maybe repurpose your videos for to see if you can land grab some attention? At the end of the day, Instagram's got its own algorithm. They use their hashtags. If you've got an, if you've got a, an Instagram feed, if you've got an Instagram following, it's your chance to start pushing people to other platforms and your chance to start building an audience. I mean, I know Sunny Lena Doozy has a load of views that she pushes from Instagram to YouTube and that's grown her YouTube channel. So I'm curious, have you got an IGTV channel? Will this be the thing that finally seals it for you and you're going to start using it? Please tweet at me, at Alan Spicer YT, using the hashtag Start Creating Podcast. Now, before we get on to talk about how I grew my subscriber base from zero to 6,000 subscribers in less than two years, I want to help you with my very special free ebook. It's all of the basics that you need to know to grow your YouTube channel. It's how to start and grow your YouTube channel, 10 top tips, and it's available at alanspicer.com forward slash ebook. It will step you through your niche, your branding, and consistency, along with many other things. So go to alanspicer.com forward slash ebook, download it for free. I uploaded my very first YouTube video to my tutorial channel in July of 2017. Since then, I've amassed over 6,000 subscribers in less than two years. Now, this isn't a sprint. It's definitely a marathon process. And yes, I'll be honest, I had some experience before I came to the, the YouTube platform. I'd already been creating videos for another YouTube channel for around about four or five years. Completely different niche, completely different substance, much more comedy, but the aspect of creating regular content in a focused niche was core. Now, that YouTube channel gained around about 46,000 subscribers, around about 40 million views. And at its height, I decided maybe it's not a topic or a community-friendly channel maybe i've grown up a bit so it's time to touch upon educating maybe i can share my knowledge with other youtubers so i switched over and i started creating my youtube channel which now has as i said over 6000 subscribers around about 600,000 views as of right now which is may in 2019 so i'm going to tell you how i did that what what i drilled down into and how you can replicate the same results if you're dedicated enough. Now, first of all, the very first thing that I ever did was deliberately pick a niche. Now, all is good. When you're on YouTube and it's very your very first YouTube channel, everybody does it. They'll throw up random videos. My very, very, very first YouTube video, all of eight, nine years ago, was I took a clip from when I went to a, a gig. I uploaded it. It was a, a, a rock concert with... A band that the name's completely off the top of my head now. I can't remember. Motley Crue. There you go. And it was a drum drumming section from Motley Crue. My next one was a, a comedy video of me and a friend. And then it was me talking to a diary. All of those are lost to time now. They've been deleted and they've been removed from the channel. And when I first started my, my other channel, it was very scattershot. It was me talking about myself, me talking about my depression, me making comedy references about girlfriends, just just generally me voicing my my brain. But once I started to niche down, I saw substantial growth. 
And that was my very first lesson and my very first lesson for you. Pick a niche. Like, don't juggle something. Pick something that you truly, truly love. Something that you're absolutely passionate about. That you could talk about for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on end. The reason for that is because you will have to talk about it for hours and hours and hours on end. In painstaking detail. Basically, if you pick something and you're able to exploit that, and you're able to research something out of your own passion, your own love, let's say you really, really love Red Dwarf, for example, you're then able to drill down into each one of those characters. You've got Lister, you've got Cat, you've got Creighton, you've got multiple actors that played Creighton. Now, if you don't know what Red Dwarf happens to be, and you're an American, I highly recommend you hunt it out on BBC America, one of the fantastic sci-fi sitcom comedy things that, that was knocking around in the 80s, and it, I believe it's still going today um, since it's been rebooted. I say rebooted, it's the same cast, they just brought it back because it was one of those cult icons. Now, once you've picked a niche and you know you can drill down into it, that avoids you having to juggle multiple niches. The problem with multiple niches is that, let's say... You have three passions, and you like automobiles, you like Red Dwarf, and you like skydiving. There's no way that you can match those together. You can't skydive in a car while singing a Red Dwarf theme song. I mean, come to think of it, that's probably a fantastic video that might go viral. But you can't do that every time you make a video. So, if you put out a video on a Monday, that video will serve one audience. You put out a different video on Wednesday for a different audience. It immediately splits the luck of your channel. People would come across it, they'd subscribe on a Monday, and then by Wednesday, you've confused them and you may even lose them. But, if you put out three videos a week and they're all on the same topic, you build consistency, you build brand, you build recognition. And they get used to you for your knowledge and your passion. And when you start to teach about that passion, they trust you because you've been talking about it forever and a day. Now, once you know your niche, look for YouTubers in that niche. Why? Because those YouTubers can help you. They've already done some of the legwork, especially the specific, like, the the successful ones. They've gone through the aches and the pains, so they know what kind of thumbnails work. They understand how, appro how to approach a formula of a video. Do they open it in a certain way? Do they brand it in a certain way? Do they, do they use jump cuts? Or is it long form? I mean, if you're, if you're going down an educational route, maybe sitting there for 10, 15 minutes in front of a whiteboard taking notes is exactly what people want to watch. But on the flip side, I don't want to see someone sat down in front of a whiteboard explaining how they're doing a, a cake-eating prank using whiteboard markers. You need to understand who is in your marketplace, who is in your niche, and how those videos are created. You take notes of those, you see how you can pick from those, are they lighted in a certain way. Once you've learnt those lessons, you now need to think of 30, 50, 100 videos that will get you started. I mean, you've not even created content at this point. You should be doing the research. You know your research. You know your niche. You know that you're not going to juggle multiple um, topics. You've done your channel banner because now you've done the research from other channels. You understand what your avatar needs to look like. You understand what your thumbnails need to be in the future. And you think if you first 30, 50, 100 videos. These, I highly suggest, are how-tos. Now, why how to I understand that you want to lead with personality. I understand that you want to jump out and immediately be PewDiePie or Fred or Logan Paul or something that is all-consuming and 100% a, a persona. But you haven't earned the right to have a persona yet on YouTube until you have an audience. Once again, this is my approach. Some people do it the opposite way around. Some people establish a persona and then find a niche. But I tend to find that I grew my 6,000 subscribers by establishing what I can offer as value. Your first 30 to 50 to 100 videos should be you drilling down into your topic. So I recently spoke to someone that's going to be doing vehicle repairs and boat repairs. In that instance, I suggest that you pick one, say for example, boat repair, and then 
in that boat repair, you go through every detail. How to repair a propeller, how to prepare an engine, how to repair a windscreen, how to paint the boat, what specific type of paint you need, how to dock that boat, how to dry dock that boat, how to drive that boat. Why? Because people within your niche that are interested in exactly those topics and your niche will be hunting for those pieces of information. They may be starting to learn like you did, or they may be experts and may be dabbling, trying a new boat. The reason that you need to answer these 30 to 50 to 100 questions is these are the very first 30 to 50 to 100 videos that you would have looked for when you first started that, when you first started getting into that niche or that TV show or that car repair or that boat repair or that science or that English or whatever, right? You need to understand that you need to start laying the foundations of your authority. People need to trust you when they're listening to you. They need to know that you're either going to deliver them the fun that they're looking for, the passion of that hobby. Right? If if I'm looking to get into anime, I want I want to be watching someone that that's well into their anime, that that dresses up, that loves every fine detail. I mean, I'm not into anime, but you get my point. There's more more love, more passion if you're truly into it. Because if you're just reading from a script because you don't actually know about cryptocurrency, then there's no love, there's no passion. It looks bland, it looks cold. They might as well be reading a blog, blog post. Now, once you've recorded those 30 to 50 videos that all explain <clears throat> who you are and the most helpful tips in that niche to get them started, <clears throat> start uploading three times a week. Why three times a week? It gives the YouTube algorithm enough time to serve out a video and get that video some views before the next one comes along. There's always a video that's around that is new for 48 hours. And those three videos are spaced out well enough, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, something like that. There's always something new for a new viewer to come to your channel. Also, most importantly, it pumps out content to build up a back catalogue. Because it's the back catalogue that people will continue to find. But I'll touch upon that in a minute. Ignore the stats when uploading your videos. I know it's so easy. You put all that hard work and all that effort into uploading your first video, and your second, and your third, and your fourth, and you're getting no views. You're getting trickles. It's only your friends. You shouldn't be focusing on stats at this point in time. The stats, in fact, are the things that are going to kill you. Because if you start burning out on the fact that, well, I put that up and the first video got 40 vi views and I thought that was really great and then the next one's got two and three and five. See, you shouldn't be focusing on the numbers. You should be focusing on the content that you are creating. You can always remake these videos later down the way when they're better, but I'll be honest, your first videos will suck. You may not think they will, right? You may think that you've done a really good job. You put a lot of time into your first videos, but trust me, when you look back in two, three years time, you'll realize how you've got better. The gaps, the pauses, the editing, the lighting, the camera's wrong. I recorded my first two, 300 videos on my channel using a webcam, which I thought was great at the time. I look back now and the, the lighting's off and I, some of you may have noticed that the frame rate was dropping around about a year ago where the webcam was dying. And I just continued to chug out because content was more important, right? Now, you ignore the stats. You don't focus how many subscribers you have. You just keep on making the next video better than your last. And the better, the, the better they get, the more views they will get in the long run. Plus, once you build up that back catalogue and you've got around about 100 videos on your channel, this is where you start doing the backward engineering. This is the bit where you start gaining those subs and learning your channel. Now, up till now, you've created content, you've picked your niche, you've uploaded content, and you've ignored the subscribers, right? Now that you've got 100 videos, you've got a statistical base. Go back into your Google Analytics. Have a look at the videos that are getting you the most views. Over the course of those 100 videos, let's say you're putting out three videos a week, that 100 videos is pretty much most of a year worth of hard work there. So, six, eight, ten months down the way, you would have grown, you would have got better, and it's given them time for those videos to get views. 
Have a look at the ones that have got the most views. Is there a clear, proud outlier amongst the rest of them? Out of 100 videos, let's say only 10 of them really did well. What makes those 10 videos important? What makes those 10 videos watchable? Why have they picked those 10? Is that, are they based on a set topic? Once again, going back to the red dwarf analogy, are, are, are you focusing more on one character and those are getting more views? If you're talking about the mending the boat, do you tend to get more views when you're talking about mending the engine or painting the boat or mooring the boat? Or do you get more views when you're actually driving the boat and just being you? Have a look at those outliers. Have a look at those stats because that's a clear sign that that's what your audience wants. Of course, over the course of those 100 videos, you would have amassed a small audience. It may be a few hundred subscribers. It might not be. It might be a couple. That doesn't matter. But you focus on the videos that got you the most views because those were clearly the most compelling. And now you double down into those videos. Have a look at those videos. Can you remake it? Can you update it? Was one for an old car engine and you can change to a different car engine? Was it for a Nissan and now you've got a different car? Right? People clearly were interested in that topic and interested in that video for a reason. Now, if it's a tutorial, a very set tutorial on that very set engine, have a look at it, tweak it, update it, re-record it for better quality maybe, or give an extended version of that video. So you cropped it down to three minutes, maybe make it a 10 minute video and go into more minute details. Explain to each part where you're going through. Or if it's a 10 minute video, condense it down into a two minute quick video. Explain it in tips, that kind of thing. The reason you're doing this is these are your initial levels of gold. So you, you, you are mining, you dug in a huge field, and now you realize that certain parts in that field is more gold than others. So why would you continue to dig in the other parts of the field where there is no gold? You don't, you focus on the places where there is the most gold. Right, And if you put more effort into the area where you found gold, you're more likely to find more gold in the same area. Now, once you've doubled down, you have to continue to brainstorm with the titles. Now, obviously we're paying attention to search engine optimization. We're having a look at the titles, the tags, the descriptions. We're making sure that everything is in the right place for people to be searching for the topics that they wish to and find your video. You're, you need to be tightening the videos with not only the optimized word, so think how you would search for that video. You don't specifically type, my day out in Disneyland. No, you'd type the specific ride, wouldn't you? Space Mountain, Disneyland, or how to fly drone, right? You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be searching for drone footage 17. You need to think of how they will find you. And once you've brainstormed these titles and you know these titles, this is the best way for you to create your next content. Especially if you're looking at your, your top videos, you note it down. I always have a notebook file open on my laptop. Every now and then if I get an idea for a title, I'll note it down. That title may never see the light of day, but I might... Because I found that for a reason, because it's it twigged, because it's related. I'll spin it... And a version of that will be a video at a later point or a series of videos. And you can do the same. But remember that you need to keep attaching this to the videos that are doing well for you. Right? You've already done the 100 videos. That's a lot of hard work. Maximize that potential and keep going. So let's say you now do another 100 videos based on the top 10 of your previous. You'll now have 200 videos, which is a bigger data pool. Right? Hopefully within that time, because you're now making, that's 100 videos that people wanted to see within that niche, you'll grow a bigger audience, which will then give you more data, which will then show you which videos are getting you those subscribers and getting those views, and you do it again. And you cream off the crop at the top every time. Have a look, see what are doing better, see which ones are still performing. If there's now, now you're at 200 videos in, you may be two years down the way, like I was, right? 
So what I did at the start of the year, the start of this year, when I had around about 2,000 subscribers, I once again went back to my best performing videos. And at that point, there were things like how to create a custom channel URL, um, how to delete a YouTube channel. But I noticed that if, if I added how to, how to delete a YouTube channel on mobile and how to create a custom channel URL for this year and things like that, if you update them because the older video was out of date and it looked nasty or the data was wrong or the information has changed, right? If you're now looking at the fact that there's a new Nissan or there's a new boat or there's a better paint or you're worried about mold resistance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? As long as you know what videos people are looking for, you're able to drill down into those. And each time you do that 100 video review, you get more and more hyper niched, more and more direct. So my first 100 videos, maybe I was lucky, and maybe I got 400 subscribers. My next 100 videos, it jumped me from 400 subscribers to around about the 2,000 at the start of this year. And since the start of this year, I've grown from 2,000 subscribers to just over 6,000 subscribers in less than five months. Now, why? How? Because that was my third round of doubling down on the things that worked. At the start of last year, I was getting 500 views per day. Now I'm getting around about 3,000 3,500 views per day. Once again, it's all down to doubling down, reevaluating, making that coffee stronger, boiling down that liquid, right? Because if you initially start off with a huge jug of water and one teaspoon of coffee, and you slowly boil it down and slowly simmer it, it gets stronger and stronger and more potent, and it gives you that kick that you need. Now, one important thing that you always need to focus on is your skills. Over the last two years, I've continued to learn. I've had friends, I've had family members that have continued to nudge me to help me improve. I've got a friend called Desiree Martinez that I work with on a regular basis. In fact, that always continues to try and nudge me out of my comfort zone. And I moan and I whinge, but every time she nudges me, I'll learn a new skill. How to light things better, how to do typography, how to create Instagram content, how to create YouTube content, how to create IGTV. Now, these skills broaden your horizons and also open doors and unlock areas in which you can promote your content more. It opens you to more audience markets to spread you out. Because trust me, you can't just throw a video up on YouTube and leave it there. You do need to promote it. You do need to get better, right? I've got much better at using a camera these days. I've got much better at understanding how microphones work. I've got much better at learning new skills. In this case, for example, I'm creating an audio podcast in which this this certainly wasn't on the, the books a few years ago. But the more you learn, the more you can expand. The bigger the audience can get and the faster you will grow. And the more value you can offer them. Because at the end of the day, you need to deliver value. Because if you if you give them a video and you waste seven minutes of their time and you're talking about painting your boat, but you never show them how to paint your boat, they're never going to come back because they didn't learn anything from you. They just understand that you have to paint a boat and you haven't taught them why or how or where or what type of paint or how, how to seal it, etc., etc., etc. If you lead with value and you continue to triple down on the things that they love the most, it will triple your growth over time. I'm hurtling towards 10,000 subscribers. I'm hoping to get that by the end of the year. That would mean by the end of the year, I would have gained at least 8,000 subscribers in one year alone. When it took me nearly two years to get to my first 6,000. Just go to show that as long as you're offering what they want, they will come with you. And remember, never give up. No matter what happens, it won't happen overnight. YouTube is a marathon and not a sprint. At the end of the day, there's been many, 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 many people that have come in and out of my life that have created YouTube channels which were much more talented than me, right? They had the passion, they had the drive, they had their niche, but they didn't have the longevity. They got bored or they got fed up or they got disillusioned with their numbers. As long as you dedicate and you realise that it's a, a long-term game, and you don't get hung up with your numbers, you will get there. 
I've said this before. If you're running a marathon and you run 22, mar- uh, 22 miles of the 26 miles of the marathon, why would you give up there? At the end of the day, you might not have run it at all. Keep running, keep going, keep pushing through and you'll get the success that you need. It is important to always, no matter what, remember that numbers don't define you. So many people have come and gone from my YouTube family and all because they panic, they worry, they focus on the numbers and it's the numbers that can drive you mental. So I'm going to close out the podcast this week with a throwback to one of my previous videos. Stop focusing on numbers. Enjoy. It's a trap that many small and growing YouTubers get stuck on, and that is focusing too much on the numbers. That's what we talk about today. Here we go. Hello and welcome back to another video. Now, if you're new around here and you're looking to start a YouTube channel, grow your YouTube channel, or put your brand out there onto the second largest search engine on the internet, click subscribe, start creating. Now, YouTube is a massive platform in which people join there and they measure themselves in the successes of PewDiePie's got 61 million subscribers. Oh, I've got billions of views this month. Oh, look, look at that channel. How many subscribers they've grown this month? How many subscribers they got this week? Look, look, so-and-so went viral. This video is the new trend. Money, money, figures, figures, numbers, numbers, wow. It is so easy to get sucked into that whirlpool that you undervalue yourself, you undervalue your content, and you start focusing on that that next subscriber, that next video, that next 100 views, 1,000 views, 1 million views. That's your mistake. Now, before I deep dive into why I believe focusing on numbers is the wrong way to go, I want to know, what do you do with your channel? Do you, do you have a goal? Do you always head for the next subscriber count? Are you, are you worried and frustrated that you've been stuck at 100 subscribers for, for months on end? Or are you quite happy that you're on autopilot and you put up content and you, you don't really care about the subscriber numbers? They're nice, but you know, I'm putting up videos that help and that helps that person and it's building a community. Please leave a comment down below. It's one of the things that really bothers me on YouTube. I'll, I'll be honest, I understand that people have joined YouTube and they love to, to gauge how successful they are doing or, or how well they are growing or how well their channel is doing by that, that, that subscriber count or that view count. But I also believe that it's completely arbitrary and, and you're focusing on a number and you're stressing out for the wrong reasons or you're giving yourself something to panic and worry about and make you feel crap about when you shouldn't do. When you first start your YouTube channel, within the first year, you should ignore your subscriber count and views. Now, I know, I know, I know that sounds weird, right? But the reason for this is that within your first year, unless you are Peter McKinnon and you've had 10 years of experience behind you, unless you've already been doing it for for years and years on end, unless you are some kind of celebrity, unless you have an audience base somewhere else already, you will not grow rapidly in the first year. Your first year is for you. Your first year is to teach you. Your first year should be about you, your content, and your community, and not the numbers. I understand that there's an element of self-validation, that you uploaded a video, and 50, 100, 200, 1,000 people saw that video, and they agree with you, or they, they like that video, or they found it helpful, and they're sharing it with people, and they subscribe, and that subscriber count goes up, and you've got 10, 20, 30 subscribers, 40, 50, 100 subscribers, 1,000, 2,000, I understand that. I understand the, the positive feedback that can give you, the excitement that that can give you, but I also understand on the other side that it can feel demotivational when you, you've put in all that hard work and all of that effort and you put up that video and nobody's seen it and just sat there. What you should truly focus on is, is, is these four life lessons. And that is one, YouTube in the first year is all about learning. In fact, YouTube for your first 100 videos or so is all about learning. Now, your 100 videos could be your first year. If you're putting out one video a month, then that's 12 videos 
in a year and then it could be five or six years or, or ten years before you get anywhere near that 100. Or you're putting out four videos in a month and you that's 200 in a year so therefore you're kind of learning but the number that you should be focused on is, is how much videos you are uploading and not the subscribers that are watching and the views that it is getting. It's all about learning. You upload that first video and then you have a look at that video. Was it too tinny? Was it too orange? Am I talking to the right people? Am I getting engagement? What do I think about this? What is my mission? Two, it should be about your passion for that topic, for that goal, for your drive. I appreciate that at this point in time, it's taken me about 10 months to get 1,000 subscribers, but I weren't hunting that number. I initially just wanted to put out YouTube tricks and tips. I wanted to put out how-to videos that I could point my web development clients to. There you go, look, that's how you make a video. That's how you do this. That's how you do that. They were frequently asked questions that I could post to friends or I could post to web development clients or I could post to possible YouTube consulting clients that this is how you do a feature and a functionality. It just so happened that it also played into many other people getting some value out of that. I like it helping you. I like that it helps you. And I don't care that if it is just you, just you watching this, or if it's 10, 20, 30 people, as long as I've helped someone, that's fine. If my videos only got one view and it helped one person, then it's done what it needed to do. I understand that that doesn't sound like a PewDiePie level of of traffic, I understand that that doesn't mean a Jake Paul level of growth to subscribers, right? But that's what you should be focusing on, the impact that you can have or the impact that it does for you. Or what did you learn from making this video compared to your last one? What did you learn when uploading that to your blog? Three, if you can convert your passion into helping people, that's the true feedback loop, right? I love, that on this channel, I have a thousand subscribers that I've helped in some way. Hopefully you've subscribed to this channel to get this video because I helped you at some point, either with one video, two videos, 10 videos, or you saw my live streams and I was able to help you directly. Maybe I gave you a nugget of advice that helped. Maybe it was a nugget of gold that helped grow your channel. Maybe it was something that made your life a little bit easier, uh, you know, a specific feature on YouTube or bulk recording or that kind of thing. I love the fact that although my videos at this point in time may only get two, three, four, five hundred views per go in the long run, those are all people that clicked on that to ask a question. That question, that video answered that question for them and then they are happy and they gun away, right? That's the numbers that I appreciate, not, not the the tens and hundreds of thousands of subscribers, which may maybe one day I'll get there, right? But as long as I can help one person, that's fine. Four, you need to understand the scale of those numbers. Oh no, I only have 20 subscribers. Oh no, I only got 50 views on this video. Go back and analyze that. Go back and deconstruct that self honestly. You've got 20 subscribers. Now imagine that in real life. You walk into your living room and there are 20 people sat on your sofa. There are 20 people in your kitchen making you a cup of tea. There are 20 people sat on that double-decker bus that wanted to see you. Those are 20 real people. Shrugging them off like, oh, I've only got 20. 20 people can do a lot of damage. There are 22 people on a football pitch. And football is a national sport. Football has a World Cup. 22 people is huge. Oh no, I'm only getting 50 to 100 views per video. You are aware that a double-decker bus holds up to 100 people. 100 people. Now, once again, put this into context. That's a hundred people that actively chose to see you. That's a hundred people that actively went out their way to watch your video. Or okay, maybe it's your mum a hundred times, but it just shows that she loves you one hundred times over. 
You need to understand that they are real human beings. I know, I know that you look at Alfie Days, and I know that you look at Philip DeFranco, Roberto Blake, Nick Nimmin, Amy Schmittauer, uh, Logan Paul, Jake Paul, KSI, Comedy Shorts Gamer, More Console, Matt Pat, and they've got millions. You need to understand the value of the people that watch you. All it takes is one person to watch your video for it to be worth uploading. Stop worrying about the numbers. Go out there, start creating. Thank you for listening to the Start Creating Podcast. If you want more tips, tricks and advice from Alan Spicer, that's me, then go to youtube.com forward slash Alan Spicer and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. See you soon. Go out there, start creating.